And as promised, we will be talking about the new Pixel 10 series. So under the Pixel 10 series, meron tayong, well, apa technically, we have the regular Pixel 10, Pixel 10 Pro, Pixel 10 Pro XL, and meron din tayong Pixel 10 Pro Fold. Pero yung Fold, kaya tayo wala, unang-una, <laughs> medyo namamahalan ako. Pangalawa, hindi siya sabay na ni-launch with these phones. So October 9 pa siya ilo-launch, which is why wala pa rin kayong mga reviews na nakikita sa YouTube. Before we get straight to my one-week experience with the Pixel 10 series, specifically the Pixel 10 Pro, pag-usapan natin kung saan ko siya nabili. Unang-una, nakuha ko siya or binili ko siya sa Cortezan. Sa Facebook, meron silang store. Verified yung account so hindi kayo basa-basa maliligaw kung saan kayo or saan yung sila hahanapin. Sa kanila talaga ako bumibili ng Pixel phones ko the past few years. And then, address ko lang, wala pong official seller or wala rin pong official dealer ng Pixel dito sa Philippines. Kaya wala tayong choice talaga kung hindi bumili sa gray market. Meron naman yung iba bumibili sa official stores talaga kapag doon sila sa country na yun, nakatira katulad ng Singapore, Japan, USA, ganyan. Although disclaimer, kung sa US kayo bibili at gumagamit pa rin kayo ng physical SIM, take note, wala na pong um, physical SIM yung mga US Pixel phones. So wala na rin yung panundot sa loob ng box kasi... What's the point, right? So, ingat kayo sa pagbili ng Pixel 10 here in the Philippines. Tanong nyo rin muna kung anong variant ba yan para sigurado. In terms of color choices, yung Pixel 10 Pro and Pixel 10 Pro XL, they share the same color palette. Kung ano available sa Pro, ganun din yung available sa XL. At syempre, yung pinili ko, yung pinakabago nilang kulay. For the 10 Pro, I got it in Jade. And then for the XL, I got it in Moonstone. No more unboxing, nakita nyo na yan for sure sa TikTok. Kasi wala rin naman kayong makikita, to be honest. And of course, for the regular Pixel 10, I got it in Indigo. Anyway, since mag-iisang linggo na rin naman itong mga smartphones na to sa akin, pag-usapan natin yung mga design tweaks na bago sa kanya or yung hardware mismo. Obviously, the design hasn't really changed compared to the Pixel 9 series. Pero syempre, may mga tweaks pa rin if you know what to look for. Unang-una ko napansin, itong Pixel 10 Pro, it is slightly bigger than the Pixel 9 Pro. Which is why, if you still have the old cases for the 9 Pro and you upgraded to the 10 Pro, hindi mo na yan magagamit. And vice versa. At syempre, hindi lang din dimensions yung nagbago sa kanya, but also the weight. And that is probably because of the added Pixel Snap or yung pinaka magsafe niya which is the very first ever on an android phone technically the smartphones after apple applied the magsafe technology on their devices kasi sa pagkakalam ko dati may phone na, na merong parang magnet on its back eh. hindi lang talaga siya masyadong sumika so yes the added weight is because of its new qi2 wireless charging system and google is referring it as pixel snap so since nasa usapang magnets na tayo, kung may mga accessories kayo that works with your um, iPhone, this will definitely also work with your Pixel 10 series. Try natin tong Peak Design tripod ko dito sa Pixel. Ayan. Strong din naman yung kapit niya. Pero parang hindi siya as strong doon sa iPhone 16 Pro. Ewan ko kung dahil dito sa accessory lang na to specifically, pero... Makapit naman. Try natin tong moft. Okay, makapit siya. Yung tripod lang na yun yung hindi masyadong strong yung magnet. In fairness, ang gandang tignan itong moft tripod ko dito sa Jade na Pixel 10 Pro. Kasi green tapos pink. Ayan. It's giving wicked. Ang ganda ng kulay nung XL pero hindi ko talaga siya maatem gamitin. Nabibigatan at nalalakihan ako. Tapos, ito namang regular 10, okay naman siya. Actually, may telephoto lens na nga siya, unlike last year. Pero ang issue ko naman dito, wala siya ng mga bagong features like the ProRes Zoom. So, gusto kong matry yun. Kaya naman, I settled for the 10 Pro. So, other design tweaks na nilagay ni Google dito, aside from its Qi2 wireless charging system, is of course, the dual speaker grills. Nag-improve daw to in all of their Pixel 10 phones, specifically, on the top speaker of the Pixel 10 and 10 Pro. Tapos sa XL naman, top and bottom yung nag-improve. Hindi ko compare kasi wala na akong Pixel 9. Any phone from the Pixel 9 series, wala na ako nyan. Hindi ko masabi 
there, right? No, kung talagang lumakas ba. So, etong part na to, hindi ko na test. And then, since hindi naman US phone, so meron ako, may SIM tray or SIM card slot pa rin ako dito. Yun lang, syempre, hindi na siya expandable storage, which is also the case with the previous Pixel phones. Now, in terms of its display, actually, guys, kung titignan nyo yung specs on paper, halos parehas na parehas lang. Ang nagbago lang from the Pixel 9 Pro versus the Pixel 10 Pro is obviously the peak brightness. And this, I can confirm, wala man sa akin yung Pixel 9 Pro, iba yung liwanag ng Pixel 10 Pro. It was able to beat yung brightness na meron yung iPhone 16 Pro ko, and even yung peak brightness na meron yung Samsung Galaxy S25 Plus. So yes, those are the things I noticed sa design niya or yung kanyang pinaka-hardware the past few days. Pag-usapan naman natin yung camera niya and I'm pretty sure ito rin naman yung gusto niyong makita dito sa video na to. Katulad ng Apple, yung cameras ng Google, alam nyo, it's really not that of a hardware beast. Kung, kung paano nyo nakikita yung mga megapixel count na meron yung Vivo, yung Oppo, yung Xiaomi, Hindi sila ganon. It's really more of the software they improve and not really the hardware. And speaking of the megapixel, parehas lang po ang camera specs ng Pro dito sa Pro XL. So kahit anong phone yung bilhin nyo, it will have the same performance. Battery lang talaga pinagkaiba nila at display size. Meaning, it is still the same 50 megapixels main camera, 48 megapixels ultra wide lens, and a 48 megapixels telephoto lens. So what is new? Ang bago sa 10 Pro series is the 100 times ProRes Zoom. Immediately when we opened this phone in the XL, hindi po siya agad merong ProRes Zoom. Kailangan yung i-connect obviously yung phone sa Wi-Fi. Tapos, this will suggest for you to download yung ProRes Zoom na technology niya. So meaning, it really is all about software. Pero hindi pa ibig sabihin nun ay magkakaroon na yung 9 series or yung 9 Pro and 9 Pro XL nyo. Hindi pa rin, okay? So ano ibig sabihin itong ProRes Zoom? Kung capable na siya ng 100 times zoom, hindi ba hindi pa rin siya bago? Kasi marami ng phone ngayon na nag-zoom ng 100 times zoom. Actually, tama kayo. This is not new. Pero what's new is with Google, it uses AI to fill in the gaps between pixels to make a more complete image. So in layman's, palilinawin niya yung shots niyo na ginamitan nyo ng 100 times zoom. So I have here a couple of pictures, mostly text, kasi dito nag-work best yung kanyang um, AI. To be honest, I wasn't really expecting much from it. Especially if ginagamit na siya sa mga tao. Sa tao, hindi siya ganun kaganda yung output. But in terms of like, um, landscapes, text, yan yan. And in fairness naman, I have to admit, na surprise ako with how good the results are. And I'm sure you are wondering, so 100x zoom lang ba siya gumagana? Itong AI thing na to. Actually, any photos that is shot using the 30x zoom pataas, automatically gagana na yung kanyang AI processing. Ngayon, how about the actual photos? Yung mga shot taken by its main camera, telephoto lens, even the ultra-wide. Actually, ganun pa din. Maganda yung kinilabasan. Mapa- ultra-wide man yan or telephoto lens, it's been really consistent, at least for me. Yun lang, hindi ko masyadong nagustuhan. Minsan, kapag nagka-capture ako ng image, katulad nung naging experience ko sa mga recent iPhones, it's very different with how you first saw your photo, tapos kapag na-capture nyo na, tapos nag-loading na yung image, nag-process na siya, medyo umiitim na yung shot. Lalo na while taking selfies. Kulang na lang mag-screen capture na lang ako kaysa mag-take ako ng actual photo kasi mas maganda yung kulay doon sa una kaysa after capturing. If you're questioning kung may 8K video recording ba siya, well, meron. Pero iba siya doon sa 8K video recording na nakikita natin sa mga ultra devices. When it captures, it maxes out at 4K60. And by using Google's Video Boost feature, kaya niyang mag-produce ng 8K video at 30fps by processing the uploaded footage in the cloud. Unang-una sa experience namin, matagal bago na-upload yung 4K video namin sa cloud. It took hours just to upload a 1-minute video. And medyo uminit na yung Pixel 10 Pro namin. Maganda, realistic yung colors. It really has all the detail. Pero ang problema nga, hindi siya ganun kabilis. Or I would say it's not a seamless experience. Okay, bukod dun sa mga na-mention ko, meron din akong napansin sa kanya na bago, which is um, 
a photography tool and ang tawag dito is camera coach. Once you open the camera app, syempre dapat meron kayong internet. Upper right, meron tayong camera logo na merong star. This will immediately bring you to camera coach. So, tuturuan niya kayo guys to take better composed photos. May mga guided steps yan na kailangan kayong sundan. Self-explanatory na siya. Camera coach, tuturuan niya kayo kung paano ma-improve yung photography skills niyo. Pero, in terms of our like, usage, nahirapan kami sa kanya because first, it takes time. Pangalawa, hindi siya advisable, especially kung nga street photography, mawawala na yung subject niyo bago niyo pa matapos yung shot. I think ito, Specifically, okay siya siguro sa mga senior ganyan or those people na lang who really have all the time to take that perfect shot. Personally, this is not useful to me and feeling ko iilan din sa inyo hindi ito magagamit. Katulad na lang ng isa sa mga features ng iPhone which is the camera control na hindi ko rin nagagamit. Yung visual intelligence, nagagamit ko yon using the camera control. But other than that, for capturing photos, hindi talaga. Anyway, now that you already know my thoughts about its camera after a week, pag-usapan naman natin yung performance niya, which is also something na... Paano ko ba ito sasabihin? <laughs> hindi ako natuwa, pero inexpect ko na rin naman siya. Hindi ko rin naman ito kasi first time magre-review ng Pixel phone na may Tensor chip. Meron siyang Tensor G5. So, G5, ibig sabihin, pang limang generation na nila to. It's been five years, yes, since umalis sila from using a Snapdragon chipset. For my unit, yung Pixel 10 Pro na ginagamit ko, it has a 16 gig of RAM. And take note, this is physical RAM. And then, of course, meron siyang four storage options from 128 gig to 1 terabyte. We tried playing with it with the most graphically demanding game we can think of. Maxed out yung settings and played the game for more than an hour. May mga stutters kaming na-experience sa kanya. And of course, nag-warm up din siya ng onte. Although, warming is really, I would say, normal. Kasi nga, na-experience ko din naman yan with my iPhone 16 Pro, even with the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. Siguro kaya rin namin hindi na-experience yung sobrang uminit kasi nga, yung 10 Pro and 10 Pro XL, meron siyang dedicated vapor cooling parang system, which is not present with the regular Pixel 10. And hindi namin na-testing for gaming yung Pixel 10, itong base. So, hindi ko alam, pero most probably mas iinat to compared dito sa 10 Pro. Maganda yung graphics performance niya, pero may onting stuttering nga. That is something you wouldn't experience na merong mga flagship Snapdragon chipset. So, yes, sa tingin ko, in terms of this, medyo naiiwanan pa rin talaga yung Tensor G series. In terms of the brain, the iPhone 16 and even the Samsung Galaxy S series has. Lalong-lalo na kung ma-AAA game kayo. Now, let's talk charging. Alam nyo, nag-charging test kami. We did it at least siguro twice just to confirm kung talagang ganun yung naging output. Meron akong copy dito, guys. From 0 to 30%, it took 19 minutes and 13 seconds. And then from 0 to 60%, it took 41 minutes and 49 seconds. And of course, to fully charge it, from 0 to 100, it took 1 hour and 35 minutes. Which is actually not super far from what other tech reviewers experience. Halos pare-parehas. Medyo matagal. Why? Because it is only um, capable of max 30 watts. Yung 25 watts sa Qi 2 wireless yan. And take note, yung 25 watts Qi 2 wireless pa, dedicated lang yan dito sa XL. Sa Pro and sa non-Pro, which is this, Ito po ay 15 watts capable of Qi 2 wireless lang. Mabagal po kasi yung wired charging speed na kaya nito, which is again 30. Sa XL kasi, 45 watts. So obviously, mas magaang ang buhay nyo dito kasi longer battery life and faster charging speed. Now, in terms of our experience sa battery niya, yung Pro na ginamit ko, it is powered by a 4,870 mAh. And the only thing ko is capable of charging up to 30 watts. Sa lahat ng Pixel phones na to, lahat to may kasamang charging cable. Pero wala pong power brick. You have to buy it separately. Just like any other flagship phones these days. We had no issue in terms of the battery life it were able to give us. Halos around 13 hours yung nakuha namin sa kanya sa battery rundown test. Lalong lalo na if you will um, turn on the Wi-Fi full brightness, tapos magsisteam pa ng mga 1080p to 4K videos. Although ito, isang beses lang namin pinest. Now, AI, actually, hindi ko to, hindi ko masabi or hindi ko siya mapag-uusapan right now dahil 
sobrang vague or hindi pa namin siya masyadong natitest. Again, one week pa lang kasi din itong mga phones na to sa amin. Pero marami siyang mga bagong AI features na from what I know is yes, meron sa Pixel 10 series pero after an update, hindi siya mapupunta sa Pixel 9. Kumbaga, pag Samsung kasi, diba, pag ina-update yung phone, lalo na pag older flagship, madalas na-apply din doon yung mga bagong AI features. So, anong bottom line ng video na to? Well, for me, maganda naman yung Pixel 10 series. Pero obviously, this is not the phone you should be getting or upgrading to kung kabibili nyo lang ng Pixel 9. It's not smart to upgrade, especially na very incremental lang yung mga dinagdag. Kumbaga, hindi siya sobrang major leap. Kumbaga, unless you badly wanna use magnetic accessories sa kanya. And yung AI features na dinagdag is something you would really use daily. Anyway, that's it at least for now guys, for my 7 days experience with the Pixel 10 series. Let me know guys, kung may mga tanong pa kayo, I will try to answer them sa comment section. Again, it's your Tech Real Mary and see you in our next video. Bye!